Right, well, good morning everybody. Once again, welcome back to the plot. Um, quite a few new subscribers coming online, which I'm, uh, I'm over the moon with. I hope you're enjoying the shows. Um, if you're not uh, acquainted with it with, with just yet, I'm down home. This is my little 6x6 six six at home, which uh, I start most of my, my plants off. I've got a bit of light in here, I've got heat in here. I'm just going to turn that camera around a wee bit because I think it's... Um, I think the light's going to be in the way, but anyway, I'll leave it for the time being. <coughs> anyway, as I say, I've, uh, we've been uh, we've been really busy this week, and that is still dropping down much farther than what I would have liked. I'm definitely going to have to invest in a new camera and a new tripod for the uh, for the coming season. So <coughs> I'll just turn that around a fraction, and hopefully that'll be yeah. Uh, I'll be better. I hope that light's not too much in the way. <coughs> That's one of the lights I'm going to be using within the next week or two. And of course, it's just to put a bit of um, secondary lighting in the greenhouse here. But uh, yeah, we've been uh, we've been really busy this last week. Uh, me and Roger took um, uh, acquired another greenhouse again, another eight by six. It's a bit bigger than this one. This is only a six by six, but it uh, it came fully glazed, so we managed to um, dismantle it through the week. And we've taken it over to the plot, which uh, where we've stuck it for the time being just on top of the rhubarb bed. Now the rhubarb bed, we had to clear out, if you go back a fortnight ago in some of the videos, um, what we did do, we cleared all the timber that was lying on top of the rhubarb bed. Um, it was just a mess, yeah, because the rhubarb bed started growing, the shoots had come, started coming through. So I says, far better get it cleared off, get the timber cleared off, and then it's going to let the light through into the rhubarb. Um, and of course the next day we've got this greenhouse so we've just we've taken the frame out, we've got all the glass stacked away on the benches and we've put the frame on top of the um, on top of the roof of our bed so it's, uh, it's more or less defeated the, the cause that we're after in the first place but anyway it's going to sit there for a, for a couple of months anyway until we're, we know where it's going to go but uh, unfortunately we've got too much work to do at the moment to start worrying about that but uh, it was just getting the it was getting the greenhouse over before it went anywhere else um, I've been taking all my orders this last couple of uh, this last couple of weeks, and of course there's my me, me favourite ones, uh, Just Seed. I've had a load of um, load of comments on the Facebook page about these. Uh, where to get them from? Well, just go online, JustSeed.com, and uh, they're a fantastic. They're uh, they're they're a good seed. I've had I've used them a few quite a few times, and uh, they're pretty cheap. But they uh, I like to use them. Um, as well as all the other companies that I use, and that's just, um, <coughs> as I say, they're really quick. I think I already use on Sunday night and Wednesday morning, the postman was popping through my door. What I like to do on these, uh, I like to send away for my geraniums and my begonias. Now, I have ordered some begonias from one of the big companies. Now, I've got these through the door the other morning. Uh, these are from Parks, and these are my first of the tubers. Rooted begonias. Now, what I intend to do this year, that's why I bought some of these, because at the back end of the year, I tend to, I want to put a lot of these away, the same as the dahlias, the same as the croissants, and I want to start taking cuttings on these next year. Well, it's quite an easy job to do, um, but what I will do, I mean, already we're, uh, we're talking about next year. Um, it's unbelievable, we're just getting over last year and we're talking about next year already. But this is, uh, this is going to be. One of my jobs for next year is to set these away early on a bit of heat. Um, what I've done today, I've set the, the heat mark up, um, which was supposed to be in the in the um, in the garage. And unfortunately, one of my lights have broke, so I'm going to have to get a new bulb for that. So for the time being, what I've done, I brought the heat mark in here on one of my benches. Uh, I've put a couple of layers of newspaper down, put the heat mark on top of that. And then what I'm using is, um, is these trays here. No holes in them, they're just sitting on top of the heat bed. But what I have got, I've got all my quarter trays, and I've got my half trays, and I've got my full size trays. I love using these quarter trays, they're a great idea. Um, I think I got these from Wilkinson's years ago. I've had them for about, must be about uh, six or seven years now, and they're still going strong. A little bit of moisture coming out the bottom, but that's not going to harm the, the heat mat because these trays have got any holes on. And why I like using these ones is because uh, the seeds, when you're, when you're ordering um, the likes of um, geraniums, if you look at the back of the packet, it's 10 seed. So that size is perfect. 
<coughs> um, so I've got the geraniums to go in and I've got the begonias now. With the begonias they're non-stop mixed 50 seed, but what these are, they're pelleted seed. Now when you're sowing begonias, they're a really difficult seed, they're really tiny, they're like lipidia. And you've got to have a bit of heat on for these, that's why I put the heat mat on. And of course I'm going to be covering the tops with a plastic cover, so it's going to lift the heat up a little bit more in this greenhouse. As long as I've got around about 55, 60 in here, on, on this bed alone, I'll be quite happy, and these will pop through quite warmly. But the, the begonia um, tubers, completely different again. Um, once you get them, you've got a, a hollowed out top, which uh, you know is the top end of the tuber, and a concave bottom with a lot of root on, a lot of hairy root on, which is a bottom. And all I like to do is to get a, a pot full of multi-purpose compost, and of course I've got my own mix here, sharp sand, and I've added a little bit of perlite. And the best thing to do is just press the begonia tuber into the moist compost, which that is, and I've a little bit along the sides, a little bit of perlite mixed in with that, and that's a cascade petunias. Then I've got a full tray down there. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. I've got sixteen there, sixteen petunias there, the, the tuberous ones. So I'm, I'm more than one with them. Now what I want to get started here is to get. Um, once I get them in, once again I get them a good drink of. Yeah, chamomile tea. What I did do this morning is before I need to get all my trays set out so I know exactly what I'm doing. What I did do this morning, I brought a, um, and this is imperative. This I, I keep seeing it and I keep seeing it and I keep seeing it. Fresh water all the time. Don't use dirty water out your tanks by all, you know, because the first thing you're going to do is spread diseases, pathogens, viruses, molds, all that onto your fresh compost. If you paid out for good compost, good seeds, you're going to ruin it with, by using dirty water. So what I did this morning, I went upstairs. Now it's still cold, the tap water. You can bring it down the day before and let it come up the temperature in your greenhouse, which is perfect. But um, I forgot last night, so what I did this morning, I filled it up and I put a little bit of warm water, warm water in it, so it's brought the temperature up to around about what I like. Now these trays, these trays here, they're pre-soaked. So they've had a really good soaking. And as I say, the water's dripping through the bottom. And that's what I like. Um, nice free draining for the seeds. Now, we're going to spread the seed on top. Different ways with some of them. Because the geranium seed is completely different from the begonia seed. The geranium seed. Well, I like to keep the packets, as I say, because um, I'll just cut the top off them. And, uh, and you get a nice sort of plastic bag inside of here. There's nothing fancy about them. But uh, I've used them for a couple of years now, it's just seed, and uh, I'm, I'm well, well chuffed with them. So as I see, with these small trays, they're, they're perfect for 10 seed. Um, you can tip them out in your hand if you want. You'll find it a bit easier, there's one left in there, what's out? It's out there now. You'll find 10 seed in here, and I think that's just about right for spacing them out in that tray and they grow on. You don't have to prick them out in a hurry. There you are. Two rows of five. You don't have to prick them out in a hurry. All you need to do is just get a little bit of compost and a little bit of perlite mixed in with that and just a light sprinkling over the top of them. Very light. You can use a you can use a sieve if you want. A small sieve. Put a little bit of compost in there and just sieve it over the top. But uh, with my compost, it's already been uh, more or less fine graded, so just a, a very light covering over the top of that. And once again, don't forget your marker. That's the first one done there, and that's um, geranium red F2. It's geranium sprite. So I'll, uh, I'll put a marker in there. I know what that is. So I'm going to go into the begonia now, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to sow the begonia. You know, it's approximately 50 seed in there. So what I'll use for the begonia, I'll use a half-sized tray, not a quarter one, a half-sized. But these are, yeah, these are different again, because when you're sowing begonias, you don't want to exclude light from them. If you exclude light, you'll, you'll 
hinder the germination. So what I like to do with mine, once I get into the packet, yep, and there should be a little foil, there we are, which it makes it a lot easier. There's a little plastic foil there, and that's why I've got the glasses on the day, which is, uh, you pop that in, in, there you are, you've got 50 seed, and a pellet, pellet seed, so it's really easy to see. I mean, you can tip them into your hand if need be, which I've done there. I've tipped them into, the, into my hand there, and palm, you can see them quite easily. Now all I need to do is to use the uh, the full, just gently, the full tray, full half tray, just gently spacing them out. You can do it much easier with a pellet seed than what you can with a normal seed because they're really tiny seed. But uh, and it, of course these are coated with a yellow, um with a yellow coating which makes it a lot easier for you to see them. So there's they're done really easy. They're well covered, that's a whole half tray. There's fifty seed in that half tray. Now as I say for begonia, you don't want to cover them. So what I like to do to anchor them down is just to take a wee bit of um vermiculite or perlite, perlite in this in this case, and just a very light sprinkling over the top. And all that's going to do, with it being white, is just going to anchor them seeds to the compost. Compost is nice and moist, and that's them finished. All they'll get now is a plastic coating over the top. Now, one thing what I like to do is I like to Take, I like to lift this off every day and just take a cloth through it and wipe the condensation off because there's nothing worse as your seedlings grow have condensation dripping on them and then once again just a very light spraying over the top just to dampen that the um, pure light down a bit and the same with the geranium of chamomile tea once, once they start going through I'll give them another good soaking of chamomile tea Top's on there now. The heat bed's working fine. I feel it now. It's lovely and warm. So it's going to raise the temperature. Plus it's going to keep the temperature in the greenhouse um, nice and warm. It's actually 65 in here today. And of course, in another four or five weeks, uh, into the ten, towards the end of February, I should start to see a little bit of sunshine coming over the roof. It's, uh, it's late January, but this is a perfect time. As I say, if you've got a little bit of heat, a little bit of light, windowsill even at home to get a begonia started and to get your um, to get a geranium started. So I've got there uh, I've got another four packets of geraniums to put in. I've also got some um, some Kofu tomatoes. I got them sent up last year and they were absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think who sent them up now but uh, I'll go back on on some of my notes and I'll I'll find out. But uh, I'm gonna be sowing some Kofu tomatoes now because I've got a really good uh, crop from them. Uh, we're also in the heat. I've got some long jaw chili. I've got from Dean Hood. So I'll be sowing them today. And of course, I've got the hillbilly tomatoes. Now, they were absolutely fantastic last year. <coughs> Stripey. But they're massive. Nice beefsteak. So I'll be sowing a few hillbilly. <coughs> as a rule, I don't start. <coughs> as a rule, I don't start my tomatoes off till March. But that's in a cold zone. In the Mellon House up the allotment. A cold zone will be around about 50 mark. Uh, in a cold greenhouse, but it, to me it's not a cold greenhouse because once that sun hits the roof, bang, it, it, how is that temperature straight up? As long as you've got a couple of little plastic containers like this, that's all you need. A couple of trays, what I'm going to be doing is sowing a few tomatoes in pots like this, and I'll just, uh, I'll show you how we'll get on with them. I've got some uh, some different ideas about where I'm going to put tomatoes this year, but um, we'll get all that sorted. We'll get them grown through, we'll get the begonias finished, we'll get the, the um, get the geraniums in, and I've got some carnation to plant. I'll get them carnation in, carnation in the day, and I've also got a packet of um, sylvestris somewhere. That's another packet I want to sow. Yes, Nicotiana, or Nicotina, as people call it. I'll get them in today, because they're absolutely fantastic flower. 
So yeah, I'm going to be really busy here the next 10 minutes. So I'm going to crack on with this. But what I'll do, if I can get up this afternoon and get the, get the rest of the video finished, we'll do that. I want to take this honey up, get the apple tree sword, and we'll, we'll crack on with the strawberries. Because um, I think it's about time I made a few baskets up. I've got the cement mixer ready to start. I've got my compost, my sand. Uh, Roger's emptied out the compost bin last week. Absolutely black. Fantastic. He's managed to put it through a rough sieve and we've got eight big bags ready to go into the mixer. So I'll, I'll show you that up the garden anyway. And then we'll start making a couple of mixes up for the strawberries. But for the time being, I'm going to crack one down here. I'm going to get these um, get these geraniums finished and get these uh, begonias finished. And then get the tops on, get the covers on, and then they're away. I'll, I'll keep showing you how we'll, how we'll get on with these with the progress of these over the next couple of um, over the next few weeks. I've, uh, I've sowed onions, Spanish onions and that in there last week. Um, so I'll, I'll update you as how they grow. Okay? So we'll pop up the lot and, and uh, see if we can get this out of trade on. Okay? See you soon. Right, well, good afternoon. It's uh, 2 o'clock here for the plot. And... Uh, Gorgeous afternoon. The sun's just starting to go down in the west, but um, yeah, it's a lovely afternoon. Of course, I've, I've popped up here this afternoon just to, uh, just to try and get this, um, this apple tree sorted out, but unfortunately, as I mentioned before, somebody's popped a greenhouse in front of it. <laughs> it's the uh, 8 by 6 that we'll pick up uh, through the week. All the classes are safely stored away over in the, um, over in the shed, and uh, the framework's just sitting here on top of our robot bed. Uh, as I say, at the moment uh, they're just starting to break cover. There, you can just see the buds come through the, just come through the bottom there, and this is a perfect time to, to do a little bit of work on them. <clears throat> as I said uh, the other week, within the, the raspberries, I like to put a bit of uh, horse manure on the beds, and uh, a bit of sulphur of potash. And of course, the only thing that will be going on top of here is uh, a little bit of horse manure. We'll get a few bags, and the whole bed will be covered. We'll lightly fork right down the middle, because there's two rows of crowns down the other side and what we'll do we'll just slightly fork down the middle and that breaks it up and just lets the moisture seep through into the crowns. It doesn't matter about covering the crowns with manure, they'll, they'll still come through. And of course this bed's now about eight years old so ideally I want to get this sorted there um, this year. Maybe divide it into three parts, take the crowns out, separate them and uh, build a new bed somewhere else. But uh, we'll talk about that uh, later on in the year. For the time being I want to crack on this apple tree. Um, I wanted to get it done there uh, before the holidays, before the Christmas, but uh, as I say, with um, with going into the hospital, uh, I had a, uh, had a few bits and pieces to get sorted out first. But I'm going to crack on with this anyway. The uh, most important thing is a good place here. It's a staging tube in here uh, supporting it. And what's been happening is where the branches have grown here. Got some, <coughs> got some uh, tube wrap in here. Them away from the, uh, away from the actual tube. But uh, the way it's been grown out here is going into the shed. Um, I want to make sure uh, it doesn't get any further. So I'm going to cut this big branch out here. Just make sure you've got a really good pair of uh, good snips because I want to get it as close as I can to the actual stem. Make sure I cut right through there. Nice clean cut, and that's it off there. And of course, the mullet of honey is there. Uh, this is I was going to bring up, and I want to completely cover that wound with the honey all the way around. And that just for a nice a nice bond on there, and that will stop any diseases getting through into that. As you see, I like the I like to try and get my trees done round about the uh, November time before the, the heavy weather sets in. And of course, once again, just a small pair of seconds, that's just a here and your small roots off. There's a, quite a few of them on here. As I say, I never had time to do it at the back end of last year, but um, there's another one I'll have to cover with honey. And that one there. The rest should come off pretty, quite easy with the, with the second hand, which it off. That one again is up against the post. Cut that away from there. Any small spurs that's coming out, there's the one there. That's been snapped, that one. So that'll 
smoke for a second has. And it's just generally cleaning it up so it's nice and nice and tight. So the main spurs on the top there, I'll have to get up and cut this. But because what um, what I intend to do with these is to cut them back by a third because they are getting a bit high now. And maybe just leave them for this year. There's quite a few spurs being snapped away from here. So if you do find any that's been broken, just cut them off. That's the best way. And you keep the tree nice and healthy. So what I might do, I might just leave it again for this year. Yeah, because yeah, I want to get them, I'm going to need the pair of steps to get up to them. And I don't think I'm, I'm fit enough just yet. Then a couple of big branches around the side that I've taken off. Once again, I'm going to look at honey. But for a nice a barrier on them, I'll keep them nice and clean. And it's the same with any trees that you do. Uh, you can use uh, you can use grease. There's a lot of grease bands around now, and uh, um, wound healers. But uh, to me, I like to use just a little bit of them. And there's not any insects around, so at the moment, no uh, ants or whatever to, to start running up the tree and. A little bit cold for them yet, but just a nice, nice covering of honey. And any of the wounds, there's a nice big one there that I cut off. Good covering. That sun's just going down, it's not sunny, it's just funny. And the sunshine, and of course, up there. I'm not lucky enough to be able to get the sunshine down to the old home just yet, because you know I face south. And uh, I don't see any sunshine from December right through. End of February, begin March, and the sun just rises above my roof, and I start getting a little bit of relief of an afternoon, a couple of hours of sunshine. And that couple of hours of sunshine makes all the difference. If you're looking down at the polytunnel at the bottom there, the sun's right on there, and I bet the temperature's at least 60 degrees in there, and that's where I'm heading out to, uh, to start doing a couple of baskets up. But there, uh, we've got a mixture made up. I'll take these tools down with us. We've got a mixture made up. Uh, as I say, what you can do with these, if you see any scabs or any diseases on your trunks, and that's just, uh, just a couple of drops of uh, soap, a soap water, and just get a, give it a good spray. But not on today, because it's, uh, it's a wee bit windy. But all I do is I give, the, give the trunk a good spray. And it goes down below, get a good coat of manure to go around the roof. Give it a good walk. I always keep it well watered in the winter. It's going to get a bit dry. And then, it's in a couple of weeks' time into February, they're going to, the sap's going to start rising on these. So if you've got any cutting, pruning to be done and getting done this month, get a finish with. Uh, this is going to be the last of my pruning. The pear tree is just behind us there. Uh, what I might do, I'll just leave the pear tree for this year. Because I've got, this off the tree. I've got a couple of new. We've got a couple of new trees down the bottom there. If I spin this around, uh, there's a cherry tree there, and there's a pear, another pear tree there, and another apple tree. But this is this is my main pear tree here. It's an absolute corker, and I get a beautiful crop off here. Now I'm just going to leave that this year. I haven't uh, I haven't bothered cutting it back. There's two real main um, leaders. I want to cut them leaders back, but I'll wait until. I'll wait until next year for that. As I say, that that's starting to branch right out there, and we're getting really some great crops off them. So I'm just going to leave that for the time being. But there, uh, as I say, looking down at the polytunnel there, sun shines on there. It's absolutely beautiful. There, uh, the garden's looking a lot better than what it did a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, because this place is just covered in timber. Uh, the spring cabbage are all starting to pick up there. The only thing I'm going to need is a good weed note, a hone, and a bit of... Um, bit of nitro chalk around them. The garlics are coming up through at the back end there and uh, we've still got plenty of sprouts over the far end. They're still uh, still cropping them really well. But uh, no, we're getting there. Slowly but surely. Right, so I'm going to let us go for the time being and we'll pop off inside and uh, see if we can get some of these strawberries potted up. Okay. Right, that's it. Much better, I think. It's a little breezy outside today, uh, but anyway, I've managed to get the, um, I managed to get what I, what I wanted to do, was uh, the, the apple tree sorted, cut, cleaned, sprayed, and a bit of 
we look at honey just to help along its way. No, another big job me and Roger's got to do. Um, I've just got enough mix in the basket made up off the last lot to do this first basket. So what me and Roger will be doing tomorrow when we come up, we'll be repairing the top greenhouse. I've got two sheets of polythene to put right on the top, big heavy stuff. We'll get that done and then we'll get into the, the first tunnel here, get the mixer going and get the second mix made up for the, uh, for the rest of the baskets. But I can manage to get one done and then I'll show you in next week's video. <coughs> we'll start off, we'll show you the baskets that we'll, we'll filled and they'll all be lined up in the bottom polytunnel. Weeded out, cleaned out and all ready for our first crop of strawberries. Now if you remember, um, just before the Christmas, uh, I, think it was, uh, I think it was actually Christmas week, just before the, the Christmas, when I got these delivered, and these were the Strawberries Albion. Um, now I want to use these for me, for my first earlies. So when I got them, they were just a bare rooted plant, and what I did, I stripped them right back, took all the old leaves off, all the old stems off, and just left the, the crown, and they've just been sitting in a bit of compost in a small pot. Now I like to have my plants um, a lot farther on than these, because normally I take cuttings in the autumn, in the late summer and autumn, and they're well grown, they've got a full root system before planting out in the baskets. I normally plant the baskets up on about the November time, late October, early November, and so I can sit outside on the benches for uh, right throughout the worst of the winter, and then we'll start bringing them inside at the end of January. <coughs> in batches, we'll bring the first batch in at the end of January, we we'll might bring another batch in at the end of February, and then we'll at least get two or three crops. We'll, we've got the strawberries sitting outside, I've got the strawberry giganta, the um, Senga giganta, that I got there last year, I've got 12 beautiful plants there, and they're sitting in big black pots, and they're just outside, they've got a little bit of shelter down on the bottom benches, but they're sitting there, they're perfect, and all they'll get is a sprinkle in the sulfate of potash, maybe it's next week, We'll start the video off, I'll show you how they are grown before we go into the bottom tunnel and we'll have a look at the baskets. Now as I say, I've made my own mix of for the, the baskets, now we know how to do my baskets. The baskets have got a liner underneath. Now what I like to do is I like to put a plastic bag in. Now just all I use is, <coughs> is build those rubber bags to get a, to get a pack of um, 50 I think. For, uh, for a couple of quid and they're ideal. <coughs> now reason being, when they're inside, you've got full control of your watering. You've got full control of your feeding. You're not watering baskets and it's tripping out and it's down your pants legs and soaking in your feet. Whatever you water inside, stays inside. So you've got to be very careful with your watering and careful with your feeding. And it's an easy job to do. Once, you, once you've done it for a couple of years, and you start getting the hang of it. You can look at your plants and think they need watering. But just get your finger in, in the compost, and see if it's damp down below, moist down below, and the plants are still growing well. They don't need it. Feed once a week, water twice a week. Once it starts warming up, then you'll be able to see how much your plants take and how much water they take up. But it's a, it's a great job. And as I say this way, you don't waste anything. All the feed and all the water goes into the plants. A handy tip just to have a little pot handy where you can set your basket on. And of course, this will all be cut away once they're hanging up. Now what I have done in the past, I've put three strawberries in. But for this year, I'm only going to put, I'm going to put two in, and I'm still going to give her 24 baskets. So we've got 48 of these. And there we have it. If you can see, I've got close enough, there's white roots just starting to appear on the old brown roots. So I'm pleased with that. I'm taking a little bit of bottom compost away, and you can see all the white roots here. So that's fantastic. So they're growing away really strong. I'm not getting any, I'm not disturbing them any. I've just made a little hole, a little impression in the compost, and I'm just sitting them in there. Face them to the outside of the basket, and they'll be fine. Turn that around. As I say, I'm going to put two per basket just for this year. Next year, I'll be able to put three in because I'll be taking loads of cuttings off these. Yeah. As I say, it's a new plant. Once again, there's the white roots here, growing away just nicely. I'll put that one in there. Just tilting it slightly so it faces on the outside. And they're, they're going to grow away perfect in there. <coughs> put a little bit of water on there. And of course, 
course you get chains, don't forget your chains. To me this is always the hardest part. I just haven't got the I just haven't got the fingers for it. Or the hands, come think of it. Get them nicely spaced out. Don't let that bag worry you because the chains will just go straight through the bag. No problem. That'll go nicely there. Press that down. In easy. There we are. So that's our first basket done. As I say, <coughs> it'll all be hung in the wall it tunnel. We'll probably have 24 of these <coughs> with the uh, with Alvin strawberry in. <coughs> now what I'll do next year, once I get a few cuttings uh, in the summer, I'll keep some for outside and I'll try them on the outside and see how they grow well there. As I say, these bags will all be cut away. I'll just take a pair of scissors and chop them about two inches below the, the rim of the basket. That'll hang up there now. Get a good water and then next week what I'll do is once it starts growing away, I'll give it a good dab. I'll give it a spoonful of sulfate of potash. And that's them set up. They've got all the feed they need in the make compost, which of course is the uh, two pots multi purpose compost, one pot good garden compost, <coughs> one pot sharp sand, and a couple of good handfuls of bone meal. Now the bone meal is a long lasting fertilizer, so it's stopping them baskets right through the growing season, right up until the fruiting. They'll start fruiting around about um, hopefully mid April, about four to five weeks earlier than what you would normally outside. I've had strawberries at the um, end of March, beginning of April, in some years, and uh, they really are a fantastic crop to grow strawberries. And if you've got a time to put them in the baskets, hang them up in your greenhouses or your polytunnels, and uh, you'll get a nice early crop. Once you start, once you finish your crop, you should see it start to send out a lot of runners. Now I'll do a couple of videos on these later on. Um, but once you start doing that, I'll let you get them out in the fresh air and get them hung up on the bench and out the back there. I can let them runners hang down, and then I'll I'll set the runners actually on the I'll set the, the baskets on the benches, and I can take the runners off and lead them into pots all the way around it, and take all the new cuttings. But uh, you'll get thousands of uh, thousands of cuttings off them. Well, I thought I've been a bit helpful for you. This is uh, this is uh, this is day one of the strawberries. Um, we'll have a look at next week's video, we'll have a look at the ones that's down there on the bench um, and we'll do we'll do a feeding on all them before we go into the polytunnel. By then we should have all the strawberries hanging up and I'll show you how they're doing. But uh, yeah, that's it, that's another video over with hopefully. Uh, what I have done this week, I've sorted out the last of the potatoes. Now these I'm going to take home because uh, they're still viable and these are the Desiri and we've got there. Uh, We've got a fantastic crop, if you remember last year, we've got a great crop of these. So there's a few left there for me and Roger. And what I have done there, the smaller ones and the green back ones, um, they're going to be for planting up. So I've got two trays of them. And we'll get four really good rows. And then I've got some smaller ones here, which will go for the brother-in-law or down at his plot. But you'll, they're all chitting there. So, you know, you'll get, a, you'll get a worthwhile crop out there. Nothing goes to waste. So that's the, um, that's the potatoes done. The end will be going out for, for a while yet, though. Um, my early teas are in, the, in both polytunnels. I've got the um, I've got the jazzy in the big tunnel. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to a nice crop of uh, early boiling potatoes from them. And I've got the Winston in the greenhouse here, at the top greenhouse. I've got four rows of them. That wind's just getting stronger and stronger, so I think I'm going to have to knock off, otherwise it's going to start interfering with the, the sound qualities again. But yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this week. I've had a, I've had a, a great time um, showing you some bits and pieces. Hopefully I'll give you a few tips on your fruit trees. Get them all cut back. As I say, now's the, really the last month you're going to start thinking about doing any cuttings. Because once you get into February, middle of February, early March, the sap's going to start rising. Your grape vines, the raspberry bushes, we've done all them last week. May have done, they're tied up. Fantastic, I'm moving over that. Um, the fruit trees, and of course, the early strawberries. We'll get them done this week, and it's another job out of the way. And uh, hopefully in a few weeks' time, we'll start looking about uh, getting some of the beds ready for, um, for the likes of parsnips. I'd like to have my parsnips in the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, if, it's not, if there's no snow around, I can put the, the parsnips in then. 
but that's uh, that's a couple of videos away that so we'll uh, we'll talk about all that later on but for the time being I'm going to knock off um, once again keep an eye on my Facebook page for uh, for posts on there um, it's Jeff Holman on the plot if you want to come over to our, our Facebook page by all means just send our friends who request and we'll, we'll get you on board we're, we're on there most nights chatting and uh, swapping pictures but, uh, at the moment everybody seems to be um, helping and getting seeds in I'm, uh, I'm never in a hurry uh, fair enough I've got my begonias in I've got my petunias in that I've this morning I've got my uh, geraniums in I'm quite happy I've got my combs in but that's it. As far as I go, as far as um, ceilings are concerned, um, I can wait till the end of next month, February, before I even think about uh, sowing anything else. And then into March, we will first, before I start sowing me, the pom poms, me dahlias, ben dahlias, the marigolds, all stuff like that. That can wait until March. Plenty of time for that. Temperatures are rising. The sun's coming up. You're getting a lot more light because a lot of people don't realise that's. I always say that's one of the main things you need. You need their light. It's no good there, uh, cold, dark days, seedlings struggling to come up with lack of light, you know, it's, uh, and that's what, that's what makes them uh, prone to disease. And uh, the best thing to do is just to hang on, if you haven't got the light, hang on a bit. This is COP, it's great in the polytunnel, I get the, get the sunshine all day long. But, uh, I've got plenty of light. But um, yeah, for the time being, I'll, uh, I'll get back to this next week and we'll get started. As I say, we'll look at the strawberries again, the outside ones. We'll look at the rhubarb, the rhubarb bed. We'll get that sorted out. That's if we manage to get this greenhouse shifted. Um, and then we'll we'll just we'll have a walk through the tunnels. Okay. So thanks for watching. Uh, as I say, I'm glad you're all enjoying the plot, and we'll uh, we'll see you all again soon. Okay.